What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Murph and today we got a big video coming for you guys. We are going to move our mic in the right spot because I didn't move it to the right spot before I started recording. Uh, anyways, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk through our October farming guide. So I plan to update this every month. We'll talk through like initial changes in like what became free to play form, what has changed in the meta. We will define how we are ranking basically the teams, which is how we're uh, establishing the importance of the farming of the characters. So like essentially, uh, every, anybody can put out a farming guide. Anybody can put out what we farm these top 10 characters, top 10 best characters in Lord of the Rings, Heroes of Middle Earth, right? Anyone can do that. Um, I'm going to give you the logic behind it in the same video because uh, I want you guys to understand where I'm coming from because I don't want you guys arguing with me in the comments. I don't want you guys uh, telling me I'm wrong, whatever. This is my opinion based off how I am playing the game and um, based off what I think is important content. So two first things. Number one, again, as always, we need to define what meta we're talking about or what game modes we're talking about. Number two, we got to talk about actual teams tier lists. So number one, we are talking about two game modes. One is arena, one is raid. Arena is important. You get the bulk of your gem income from there for now until the grand arena comes out. Uh, two is the raids. The raids is where you're getting the majority of your resources for your teams uh, outside of just regular daily mechanics in order for you to build your teams and progress your account further. So arena is important, but there is no meta in the arena. Arena is just who has characters that are higher gear and have more ability levels. It doesn't matter what team, there is no sing singular meta team in the arena. For the raids, there's a long spreadsheet of different teams that work on different chapters of the raids, and they're all over the place. There's a couple teams that are really good in all chapters. There's a few teams that are like the absolute best in one chapter, and they do okay in other chapters. What I've done is I've gone through kind of all that information and parsed out a basic tier list for what is going to be the best for your account as you build for the raid and for arena and everything else so that tier list is briefly here we've got rivendell and haradrim at the top of the list now technically right now rivendell and haradrim are not free to play rivendell has not had a second elrond event come out and the first time around two of or well you couldn't have uh five free to play farmable elves the first time rivendell came out or the first time elrond came out so by virtue of that, you had to buy shards for Arwen or Elodin in order to participate in the Elrond unlock the first time around. Now, uh, Elrond will be coming back around again at some point in the near future, and they are the number one raid team period across the entire board. So you should be farming your Rivendell Elves in order to unlock Elrond. That is why they're number one on this list. Uh, number two is Haradrim. The main issue with Haradrim right now is that they are pay to play. Two of the five characters are locked uh, unfarmable at the moment unless you want to spend gems on them and I don't recommend that if you are a free-to-play player uh, they are one of the top teams across the board in all chapters of the game right now uh, the, the main thing is that kind of like Road to Rivendell what a lot of people are seeing is that unless you really have these characters at higher star ranks and almost max out abilities they're not the greatest team but we're talking about like fully maxed out teams how are these teams uh, performing at the upper end of kind of gameplay now in the second tier, we've got teams that are very good in the raid uh, and also good in other areas of the game as well, but they're not necessarily the absolute best teams across the board. So we've got Rohan, which is essentially your number one free to play light team. We've got Isengard, which is your number one free to play shadow team. Combinations of those teams can be used for both the raid, for your arena team. And really, if you're just starting out in this game, I would actually recommend you farm and build those two teams over any other team on this list. And then if you have bonus energy and everything else to spend, then you can start farming up your elves for Rivendell. But really, Rohan and Isengard should be the original cornerstone of new accounts. And then you can build out towards Rivendell, towards Haradrim, and towards these other teams as they become free to play farmable. So after that, we've got another pay to play team or that is not currently free to play farmable. We've got Gondor, they are the greatest team to use in Chapter 3 right now. They're performing very well. They performed fairly well in Chapter 1. Chapter 2, I, I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, however, they're going to be, like Haradrim, locked behind gems for quite a while until they become free-to-play farmable. We've got probably about another two and a half months until they become free-to-play. Uh, so 
That is why they're a bit lower down on the list of the, the good to great teams. Then we've got Goblins. The Goblins in general, they kind of just had the staying power throughout the early few months of this game where uh, essentially in beta, the Great Goblin team with the Goblins was like the arena meta. And then, you know, the Great Goblin became locked behind gems and is still locked behind gems. Uh, and the Goblins it was kind of up in the air and no one really knew how to feel about them. And over the last like month and a half, two months, two and a half months that this raid has been out, we've actually seen the Goblins have massive staying power as a good team across all chapters. Not necessarily the best team in the game, and they might not give you any crazy numbers, but as far as investment goes, they are a team that if you build, will have applicability across every chapter of the raid so far, un unknown for chapter four. Now, going down to the decent tier level, we've got Road to Rivendell. Now, Road to Rivendell is a good team. However, like Haradrim, they require a lot of investment and really do not shine until the very late game when you actually have all the characters either at gear eight or higher and damn near max out ability levels. Um, it's a good team. And honestly, it's one to build, I think, in the long run as our accounts grow uh, older because Strider is such a good character. We're uh, building him and, and, and investing into him right now as, as a, a raid kind of plug and play character. Um, but Rangers are dead once you unlock Rivendell. So Strider needs a home in the greater uh, kind of, um, I guess, picture of the game. And once you start getting these pay to play games like the Grand Arena or Territory War style games, you're going to want to have multiple teams and Road to Rivendell is eventually going to be one of those teams. And especially if you're early on and you're not able to get gear nine pieces yet, um, being able to farm out the Road to Rivendell characters and basically get free gear nine for one character by the end of it, it's kind of a pretty, pretty great setup. I'm currently building them as kind of my alternate team on my alt account right now. And they're, they're pretty fun, pretty interesting, but they're not a world breaking team. Rangers, they're good, not great again, really. I would only use Rangers right now if you don't have Rivendell and you have those characters unlocked. You can essentially use them to hold on to your Strider and to hold on to your Elodin and Elro here until you're able to get your Rivendell team up and running, until you're able to get your Road to Rivendell team up and running with Strider, uh, so on. The Dwarves, they're buggy right now. There are several bugs associated with the team itself. Uh, they're performing fairly well in Chapter 2 and not very well in the other chapters at the moment from what I'm hearing from people. Personally, have not geared to use them yet. They're only this high on the list, and honestly, they may be ranked a little bit higher based purely off of speculation. As a reminder, in the AMA, they mentioned that the next legendary character is going to be a legendary character from The Hobbit, and I've got a strong feeling that it's likely going to be Thorin Oakenshield, and that it will require five uh, five-star dwarves to unlock him. However, that is purely speculation, and I do not rank them higher on the list uh, based off of that. So do with that information what you will. The next rank down is going to be Elves that are not Rivendell, not Elrond associated. So that would be your Woodland Elves, such as Leliel, uh, Naramiri, all of these other characters, and then Legolas kind of as well. There's kind of a, a thrown together elf team you can use that aren't uh, the Rivendell Elves. Uh, now bear in mind, if you don't have access to Arwen and Elodin to farm, as far as farming characters, which is essentially what this guide is for, is what characters are important to farm, all of these elves get bumped up all the way to the top with the rest of your, um, pr probably around like the, the Gondor Isengard tier there, because if you do not have access to R1 and Elodin shards, you have to farm some of the non Rivendell elves, or several of them rather, uh, in order to get your five elves at five stars to unlock Elrond. So already you're going to have to farm one of the non Rivendell elves just to get Elrond. The more you don't have access to between R1 and L, and it's going to increase the amount of L's you have to farm out of those areas. So, with that being said, uh, the next team down here is going to be Mordor. They're a fun team. They're very meh. They're not performing well. Misty Mountain Bulwark does not have a full five characters unless you rip a goblin out of the Great Goblin team. Uh, and only two of them are free to play farmable, really, because Bulwark is in the challenge store, but it's such a slow farm. It's really not worth spending it, in my opinion. Um, and then on top of it, we've also got. Uh, the Bruher, whatever, the, the Troll Brood, I forget what his name is. He's still locked behind gems as well. And then Dunland, we're not even going to talk about Dunland. There's like three characters in the game. They don't serve any purpose whatsoever right now. That's it. So we've talked about the tier list. These are the rules that will define the rest of the video. And holy shit, I've been talking for 10 minutes already. That's fucking ridiculous. I need to shut up. All right, we're going to go through the rest of this fairly quickly. I shouldn't have to go into too much information on these guys because I've already explained to you the rules about... Uh, or the rules that govern this tier list essentially. So 
Um, our first area of farming is going to be the challenge store here. Now we've got Halberad as a plug and play character and the Rangers lead. Once you unlock Rivendell and once you start building Road to Rivendell, your Rangers kind of just get cannibalized by all these other teams. And so Halberad is just left merely as a plug and play character. So he's good, ultimately not that important or game breaking. And Bolg, we already just talked about his team. Uh, he's a very interesting character to me. I think he's got a lot of potential, but th there's just no place for him right now, really, with all these other teams going around that are much more important. Um, so ultimately, with the challenge store, I spend the majority of my challenge points and currency on gear pieces, on the essences that are in there, because that saves energy in the long run and gold in the long run for me having to either purchase them out of the regular supply store or for me having to spend energy farming them. Um, on campaign nodes, I would instead be farming character shards. I would rather be farming, essentially, if you think about it this way, based on your challenge currency, why am I doing this? What is, what, uh, whatever. Uh, based on your challenge currency, it can influence how you're spending your energy because if you're spending your challenge currency on Halbrad and Bold, you have to then farm your essences with campaign energy. If you're farming them with campaign energy, you're losing daily farming shards. But then if you're able to spend that shit on the essences and then you free up energy then you can use this energy to go farm up characters it, it all works out right it's all a, a big old symbiotic relationship um so anyways as a challenge door challenge door is done next up we've got the arena store in the arena store we've got aomer Golbers, legolas and shagrat now aomer should be your first initial farm out of here if you are a new player period as i said they are the best early light side team for free to play players and still a powerhouse in the mid to end game kind of where we're at right now um farm aomer he is a absolute monster being able to summon other characters being able to assist he's great goldbers is also up here because goblins again are a great raid team kind of across the board uh, and then legolas is here as well now if you choose to farm legolas as one of your uh, characters required to unlock Elrond, I would bump him all the way up to the top, basically the same spot that Aomer is, simply because I think there's going to be a future in this game for Fellowship characters, and additionally to that, um, there's really not much else to farm in this store unless you choose to farm goblins. Um, Aomer is definitely top tier, Legolas and Goldbergs are kind of interchangeable depending on what you're trying to do with your account, but if you want Elrond, I would highly recommend Legolas be your fifth uh, elf that you farm outside of the Rivendell Elves. Now, Shagrat, Mordor, don't need to talk about it. Uh, fun character, but and the team's fun, but it's just, it's not great in the raid, and it's not great in Arena. Next door, we got the Guild Store. Fairly straightforward. Uh, Haradrim are one of the top teams in the raid right now, essentially the top shadow team across the board. Um, Isengard does outpace them in Chapter 2, but they are fairly close behind them in Chapter 2, and Haradrim uh, do much better in Chapter 1 and 3 than they do. So Haradrim, Haradrim, Haradrim. Wubite is the number one farm out of this store, and Miri later on. Uh, an honorable mention to this store, you can occasionally farm um, pieces of ability materials out of here as well as some crystals. So essentially, I personally would just spend my currency on Wubite shards, and then whenever I've got spare currency for crystals and ability materials, I'm buying them there. But Wubite is number one. After the guild store, we've got the light campaign. In the light campaign, uh, again, we are looking at Rivendell Elves and Haradrim. So we've got Elodin and Lomion. They're two of our Rivendell Elf characters, and they're also going to count towards unlocking Elrond in the long term as well. And Elodin is also a ranger. So early on in the game, um, obviously you have to hit that level requirement a bit later on to even unlock the tier that Elodin is on. You can use Elodin with the rangers until you're able to get Elrond unlock, or you can use him with like Legolas as a non-Elrond uh, elf team as a filler until you get Elrond. Uh, Lomion is great as well. The amount of damage that he's able to actually dish out and especially how much he's able to crit, it really helps out with Chapter 2. And really, um, I slept on Lomion when Rivendell first came out and actually didn't even use him with the team. Um, I think I was using essentially the entire Rivendell team minus Lomion and I had him swapped out for Ironhide in my arena team. I swapped him back recently since I just pushed him to Gear 8 for the raid. Um, do not sleep on Lomion. He really, really ties that team together with the amount of damage he's able to do. Yef2 for Haradrim. Once again, we don't need to talk about that. Aothane is Rohan. Again, free-to-play light team. We've got two Isengard Uruks in this tier as well. We've got Mauhur and Azhak. Now, they're both going to be the Chapter 2 Goats with that squad. They, they won't be their squad as the Chapter 2 Goats. Uh, but they are the best free-to-play shadow team right now. 
Wilfwin is also kind of in this tier, but a little lower down as an honorable mention. Now, Wilfwin, uh, when you run Rohan in Chapter 2, you typically want to run a full Rohan team, which is where Wilfwin comes into play here. And outside of Chapter 2, you can really run Strider, Ironhide, or whatever other like Halberad plug-and-play characters you want to run with Rohan. Uh, but Wilfwin is worth farming for Chapter 2. Orphurs is also up here because more goblins, goblins, goblins. And then Herendil is on here because Gondor is going to be great. They're just not free to play yet. Uh, so I, I would suggest starting to farm Gondor sooner rather than later. Frodo's on here because of Road to Rivendell being a good, not great team. Uh, Kili is on here as a dwarf and a member of Thorne's company. Again, dwarf. Uh, Kili, or Kili could be higher up on this list depending on when we get that reveal information on Thorin or what the next legendary is going to be rather, and if it is Thorn and if it requires dwarves. If that is the case, he's going to go flying up this list. So if you have spare energy and you've already potentially caught up on some of these other farms, maybe start looking at farming Keeley and dwarves. Uh, Rachma, Mordor Orc, don't need to talk about it. Nuraz, we've got another Misty Mountain uh, Orc character. Now, Nuraz is a little interesting. He's the one that summons the troll uh, summon character. He's actually a fairly okay plug and play character especially on chapter two and three of the raid chapter two um he's able to throw a block give yourself a little more survivability as well as give you an additional character to attack the troll and now that they've fixed the bug where his summons stun on the troll in chapter two uh locks the game out it no longer does that i was doing attempts for quite a while last night today and had no bugs with that so it's working great it's one of the only ways in the game right now to stun that troll and get yourself a free turn uh, in Chapter 3, the amount of blocks he's able to throw out can actually really get you a decent amount of extra points in Chapter 3. And at the bottom here, we've got our last two Dunland characters. We don't need to talk about them whatsoever. They're garbage. Don't touch them. Uh, next up, we're going to have the Shadow Campaign. In the Shadow Campaign, again, we've got Arwen right at the top here because of Elves and Rivendell. Then we've got Robel for the Herodrim team. Uh, I forgot to take the Witch King tag out of there. We still, this is from, uh, the Witch King tag was in there from an old version of this tier list. Uh, essentially, we don't actually know if that's going to be a Witch King requirement or not. Uh, it was a long ago data mine, but it could still be. But even outside of the Witch King requirement, Haradrim is still the best shadow team in the game right now. Now, Lady Eowyn, again, free to play light team. Dunhar and Morza, two more Isengard Urix. They are going to be your best free to play shadow team. Chief Kraska for Goblins again, Sergeant Ara for Gondor. And then in the good, not great tier, we've got Mary for Road to Rivendell. We've got Feely and Fro, both being dwarves. Again, if we end up having Thorin, and if you have free energy, I would suggest farming your dwarves now if you have energy to spare outside of all these other teams and characters. Leliel uh, is low down here because she's essentially a useless dead character unless you need a character to start farming in order to unlock Elrond. I know I'm about to get her to six stars on my main account because when I first started farming Elrond, she was like my only option to, to unlock him. So uh, if you need to unlock Elrond still, you need a character to farm. She's a v fairly early farm. Start farming her and literally just farm shards and put her on the shelf. Don't touch her. Tordok, again, another bold team member. Grimlers and Uzan both round out the rest of our Mordor squad. And they're very meh. Again, I wouldn't farm them unless you're done with everything else. In the guild campaign, uh, we've got, again, Elro here in order to unlock Elrond and be a part of the Rivendell team. And he's also a ranger. So he should be, in my opinion, your number one right now in order to unlock Elrond. Ironhide, as an early, early account, Ironhide is still a good early um, first farm for the guild campaign. Uh, still a great plug-and-play character. Still is great to just drop on any raid team. Mordor is trash. Ironhide is not. Don't get it twisted. Naramiri is also uh, a good character, and they're this high on the list because this is the first character outside of the Rivendell Elves that you should be farming outside of maybe Legolas just due to the fact that it is a guild campaign farm and it is the fastest way to farm character shards in the game. So essentially, if you want to go for speed of farm, you need to be farming Naramiri and Elro here both in order to unlock Elrond. They're the fastest two farms out of all the five elves you're going to need to get. And then you can toss it up between a mixture of Legolas in the arena or campaign nodes elsewhere, whatever you need to do. But Naramiri is also great in Chapter 3 with the amount of uh, Bane dispels they have or Bane cleanses they have for your team. Uh, Ugluk is, again, 
Chapter 2, Isengard, Shadow Free-to-Play meta. Uh, Grimpa is the last of your free-to-play farms for the goblins. Gimli, we've got another dwarf in case Thorn's down the road and also is in the Fellowship with Legolas. And you can kind of interchange the two of them between each other on, on the same squad. Whether you want have you know a dwarf squad that needs one character, you can throw um, Legolas on it. If you got an elf squad that needs one more character, you can throw Gimli on it, as long as Gimli and Legolas are together for their synergy. Then we got Pippin for the Road to Rivendell team as well. And then we've got Edric for Dunland. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for my October farming guide based off of this tier list of teams here. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys agree with the tier list. Let me know if you guys are farming specific teams, what you're finding is better than others. If any of this information you don't agree with, let me know in the comments so I can tell you to fuck off or whatever. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Um, I got to get out of here. I've got a potential trip for the next three weeks. Uh pending government shutdown so who knows i wake up at four in the morning tomorrow and i either go back to sleep because the government shut down or i'm traveling so uh, we'll see what happens uh, if you guys enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel like it drop a comment down below and until next time bye